Hello, everybody, and welcome to, I'm probably like making my computer skip and stuff, um, Conan Day, that's not what it's called, but um, we're going to be going over um, A Witch Shall Be Born, and um, this is a... strange story um, in the sense that it does one of the things Robert E. Howard does kind of a lot of um, and it's really the only thing of his writing that I don't like but in this story it works um, I almost feel like he does it because um, Lovecraft does it, and um, or Lovecraft did it, and since they at this time they were close and writing back and forth and stuff like that, like I feel I don't know. I feel like it was an inspiration that he shouldn't have had, if that makes sense. So anyway, let's get into it. <clears throat> and again, this was on, um, it still is, at weirdmass.com if you want to read it and come back. But this whole thing starts off with um, Taramis, who is the queen of Quran, and um, her, like, hanging out in her palace... And then her long-lost twin sister, Salame, shows up. And, um, not Salami, but Salam, Salome. And, um, the reason why she was long-lost is because she was born with, um, a crescent birthmark. Which meant she was going to be a witch. So, her parents, like, took her out into the desert and left her there kind of thing. And, um, like what happens when you leave people in the desert, they get rescued and shit gets fucked up. But, um, I wrote, uh, a piece of fan fiction called, um, a misunderstanding shall be resolved um, about this first chapter and how, like, if this chapter would have went a different way, like, how the story would only be one chapter long. So, I think that's on Weird Mask as well, but it's way back in the archives, so I will post that up, um, higher, um, on the front page, so you could read that if you want to, um, but basically, um, Salome had this guy, Constantius, um, in her control before Constantius became like, a general, or whatever the hell he was, in Quran. And, um, Conan was the captain of the Quranian army, or whatever. And, <clears throat> so, when this whole thing happened and Salame took over Quran she had um, Taramis put into a dungeon and all the jailers killed so no one would know that Taramis lives. But Conan saw her and he's like, nope, that's not Taramis, that's somebody else. And um, so there was like some big battle that there was no way Conan and his guys were going to win. So this takes us to the second chapter and probably one of the most famous Conan images of all time, which is the Tree of Woe, where Constantius 
uh, crucifies Conan to a dead tree out in the middle of the desert and vultures are circling like you've seen it in the movie um and Constantius like leaves them there because if they stay the vultures won't come down and start ripping the flesh and eyes and all that shit out so this is probably one of the best pieces of Robert E. Howard's writing. If you want to read like despair and anguish from a, like a third person narrator and see it perfectly done, this is the chapter for that. Um, the way he describes everything Conan's going through while he is, like, basically stuck, crucified, is fabulous. It is just so good. And, um, like, as with most things, if you've seen any bit of this, or read any of it, or seen the comic or anything like that, um, some dude comes by and um, gets Conan off the tree and um, helps Conan and Conan helps him and all this other stuff. <clears throat> now, chapter three is what I'm talking about with uh, Robert E. Howard kind of... Uh, I don't want to say resting on his laurels. I, d I just don't know another... Um, way to describe it really but we have the chapter starts off with like most of the chapters actually this um, a letter being written to someone outside of Quran who um, the guy writing the letter is inside Quran explaining <clears throat> all of the months of bullshit that's been going on and, um, it's really, it's just like an info dump, like a, like a plot drop or whatever the hell you call it. And I don't like this when, like, I would rather read about all this action. This is like the whole, um, where show don't tell comes from, because now this is tell, don't show. And yes, it moves the story forward. Yes, there's a good reason for this little bit right here, which we'll get into in a second. But um, it's just one of those things where it's like, fuck, man. This is such a good story. And then this happens. And I know this is like the pulps and no one was writing like highbrow literature here but it just irks me a little bit. And um, there are other Robert E. Howard stories where he does this, and um, it just... It, it gets to me a little bit. So, what ends up happening is, like, the next scene in this chapter is um, Salome going in to torment Taramis in her cell, and all this other shit. And then I believe... Like, what she ends up doing is pulling a head out from under her robe. And, um... I believe the head is the head of the guy who wrote the letter. I've always been a little on the fence if that's who it was or not. But I think that's who it is. It would make sense if that's who it is. Um... And... She's, like, talking to the guards being kind of loud about it and so in her being a little more aloof about what's going on someone hears that Taramis is alive and that the queen isn't Taramis and all this other shit well we also find out during all this shit that uh, Salame has like a temple that she sacrifices um, the villagers, like human sacrifices, to some demon god um, 
who we find out's name is Throg. Um, and I think it's Throg because it rhymes with frog, and this thing is like a giant frog monster, um, which we will find out later. Um, and it reminds me a lot of, I believe its name is Thak from uh, Zuthal in the Dusk, or Zuthal at Dusk, um, which is one of my favorites, and we're going to get to that, the Slytherin Shadow, yeah. We'll be getting into that one in two weeks, so I can't wait for that. Um, but anyway, so all that's going on, whatever. So in the next chapter, we find out that Conan and the dude that rescued him have been um, sacking villages and outposts all in between um, Quran and um, Tehran. And they have put together an army of like 11,000 nomads. And, um, Conan's just tired of the dude, and he's like, you know, I'm gonna be the emperor, and you could be my first in command, and all this other stuff, and Conan's like, no, I'm tired, like, I need to go take care of some shit, and the guy's like, what are you talking about, and he's like, yeah, you're not in charge anymore, too bad AC ain't in charge no more, um, and then Conan fucking grabs the dude's arm as the guy is going for his blade. And Conan just goes, breaks his fucking arm. And holds on to it. And the guy's not screaming. The guy's not freaking out. I mean, he's freaking out, but he's, like, keeping it cool. And, like, he's biting his lips and blood's coming down his mouth. And Conan's like, look, I'm in charge now. Everyone here follows me. Your horse is behind the tent. It has food and water. It's all ready to go. I want to let go of you, and you're going to get on your fucking horse and get the fuck out of here. Because if any of these guys know that you are a fallen leader, they will eat you alive. And, like, you won't make it. And since you saved me, I'm going to save you right now and let you live. But this is my army now, so get the fuck out of here. <clears throat> and so that's what happens. So, obviously, um, we're going to get into some awesome battle shit. But, a lot of this battle, again, is told secondhand. And there's a lot of watchers. The slaves and the villagers are, like, at the wall looking over at this battle. Because Conan has now waged war on um, the evil queen of Quran. And, um... One of the things that's funny, and I never even thought about it until when I was going over this today. She has one of her weird wizards. Um, she picks up two crystal balls and tosses them one of the balls. And she's like, go with um, Constantius to the battle so I can see what's going on. And he's like, all right. And so, like, as shit's going on, she gets on her fucking crystal ball. Okay. She, she picks up her crystal ball and she like FaceTimes the dude out in the desert through his crystal ball and he's like looking up at her and he's like terrified and it's just like he's like we're getting fucked everyone's fucked and there's just like blood going across the screen and shit and he's like um it's Conan he like we've lost like we're totally fucked and while he's like FaceTiming her um like, he gets killed, and, like, the ball gets crushed, and so her ball just goes blank. Um, so I was just cracking up. I'm like, oh, my God, it's, like, fucking FaceTime. I don't know. That was the only word I could come up with right now. But, like, uh, it's just, it's so funny. Like, when you read something from so long ago, and even though it's witchcrafty and shit, it's, like, the same fucking technology... Um, kinda. But anyway, um, so she's like, okay, so I'm fucked, uh, we're all gonna die, so, um, I'm going to, uh, 
take Teramis. I always want to call her Tiramisu. I'm assuming it's just because I'm a big dude that um, everyone's name is Salami and Tiramisu and um, Constantius. I have no idea what to call that. Anyway, so she's like, I'm going to take my sister and I'm going to fucking feed her to Throg. And um, that's just that. Well, there's this guy named, oh shit, what's his name? Valerian? Valerius? Valerius, I think. Who has basically found out what's going on and he is rescuing Taramis from the um, dungeon. And while he's taking her away, they run into Salome and um, one of her priests. And, um, there was a bunch of people with them, and they all got, like, slayed by whatever magical power she had. And, um, so when he, like, came to and took his helmet off, he's, like, all bloody and shit. Um, he asked some chick, like, where they went, and she's like, oh, they went down that way towards the temple, and he's like, oh, shit. And so he starts, like, galloping after him, and, um, when he finds him, like, Salame has Teramis by her hair and she's like dragging her across the city courtyard or whatever to this temple and he fucking takes his sword and fucking goes right through the back of fucking Salame and splits her fucking crescent birthmark or whatever and um he picks up Teramis and like tries to get out of the way and just leaves um, Salame like there with like a big old fucking blade coming out of her and the battle's ending and all this shit and then um, he's like trying to get everyone's attention he's like hey I have the real queen here but like not everyone understands that um, there was a second queen Like, like not everyone really could fathom what is going on and then all of a sudden, everyone's looking, and then they're like, wait, no, the queen's right there. Kill this dude, and kill that imposter. And he looked up, and it's Salame, and she's, like, barely alive. But she's standing there all wobbly. And he's like, what the fuck? And, um... She's like, throg, throg! And so, like, the doors burst open... And this giant shadow frog with giant fangs starts, like, trying to push its way through this little door. And then she falls down dead. Um, Salame. Like, she obviously wasn't going to live much longer. And, um... Then, like, once everyone who's in, like, the area right now, because the battle's done and they're, like, starting to come in, notices that there's this giant fucking monster coming out of a thing. They all just start fucking letting arrows into it, and that thing fucking dies and rolls down the stairs. So that part was kind of uneventful. But um, Conan, like, goes to the queen, um, Tara Mesu, and he's like, oh, hey. And she's like, oh, Conan, oh. And he's like, no, I can't live behind these walls. I'm a wandering barbarian man this Valerius guy is going to be a better captain than I could ever be anyway and I promised all my men that we would go and like pillage all this other shit and, you know blah 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 and then he's like give me some sugar baby and he fucking kisses her and he's like alright I'm out and then um it's like the next day, and Conan has um, Constantius crucified to the same tree he was crucified on. And he's like, you're like a city dude, and you're not going to last till nightfall. Like, I'm a barbarian. I could have been out here for days nailed to that fucking thing. You're fucked, and these birds are going to fucking eat you alive. And um, that's that. And Conan fucking goes off to do some other crazy Conan-ish shit. And, um... So yeah, so that's a witch shall be born, man. 
And so that's already up on weirdmass.com and uh, Misunderstanding Shall Be Resolved, my fanfic of this story is also over there. You can go check out. And um, Man Eaters of Zambula is going to be next week's story. And this is one of my favorite stories. Um, like Conan or not, this is just like a bitchin' fucking story. And it has like my favorite um, like group. And like if I if I lived in Conan's world, okay. I would be, uh oh, we're, are you joking right now, oh my gosh, hang on everybody, I gotta quit that, okay, sorry, I had a phone call come in, so I have no idea how this part of the video is gonna look, um, but anyway, um, but like my favorite, I don't know if you would call them a tribe or a people, or what, um, but they are the, um, Defari, um, the worshippers of Yogg, like, the cannibals, like, they are just so fucking badass, and, um, they're just my favorite, and, like, uh, it's like, when you think of what tribes and religions you would be a part of in the, the world of Hyboria, um, like, I, I know that everyone has these, like, existential crises where they have to figure this out. But, yeah, the Defari um, cannibals, like, I'm in. Like, sign me up. Like, um, they're just cool as shit. So, anyway, um, <clears throat> that's next week. Um, I can't remember. I think it's, it's Maneaters of Zambula. Or sh is it Shadows of Zambula? There's too many shadow titles. That can't be right. I can't remember what the alternate title of it is. Uh, it doesn't matter. Um, but I'll put that up on Weird Mass today as well. So you can read that ahead of time. And then tomorrow for Lovecraft, we're doing At the Mountains of Madness. And this is a beefy... Like, this is basically a novel. So... Um, I don't know if I'm going to break it up or not. I still haven't decided. Um, I, I have no idea. So we'll figure it out. But um, yeah, dude. At the Mountains of Madness tomorrow. Man Eaters of Zambula next week. Oh, very excited. So make sure you go down below and um, look at my Patreon. Because that's got some cool shit in it. And there's also a sneak peek of something in a little URL down there that you might want to take a look at. Um, and then, other than that, that's Conan for this week. So, um, bye, Crom. Everyone take care. So I'll see you later. Bye-bye.